Good evening and welcome back to Be Rich. My nephew and good friend Sashpat Swaminathan is here and we thought we would uh, tackle a topic that is very hot always. W- what is the difference between value stocks and growth stocks? In a very old-fashioned way, I did cover it in my book, but uh, what is value and what is growth? And in my opinion, there is big, no big difference, but there's a thin line dividing it. And uh, I don't consider stocks which don't make any profits or deliver profit positive cash flows as stocks were talking about. So what today people define as technology stocks and growth stocks are not stock for me, which is Uber, uh, Ola, Zomato, Swiggy or uh, any of these companies. They don't provide cash flows, positive cash flows. A company can of course make losses when it's growth phase, but if its cash flow is not positive, there's no point talking about it. So let's deep dive into what I think is value and growth and let's just get started with Sashwat. Yeah. Uh, Before I continue continue with the questions, uh, there was a point of uh, contention in uh, the previous videos where um, some of them had said that um, when you are supporting Tirpur um, textile textile owners, why aren't you also, that is me, mm. why am I also wearing Adidas and coming in the this But thing? these are made in Tirpur. Right. Um, so what we want to tell you was we are 100% behind Tirpur um, small and business these, owners. Uh, these shirts were also made for Nike, for Adidas in a small shop in Local Tirpur. business owner. Local business in Tirupur and uh, from the surplus lot we bought a set of uh, t-shirts which he is wearing. And um, it's very flattering that a lot of you think that it's um, as good as uh, the brand branded ones and um, we really also want to say that um, please support these businesses and we are pu- putting our full force behind them. Yes and this is indeed made there from a lot which was supplied to Nike some of it which was left over he is what wearing today and some of the leftover lot from Adidas what was wearing, what he was wearing. So it is from the same shop which makes these t-shirts. Anyway, anyway. going forward, let's uh, discuss between value and uh, growth. growth. So the first question, or rather I want to give you a few data points as I always do. Um, So I I want to look at USA because our scope in this channel is USA and international stocks. So the Russell value index is something which most investors and mutual funds treat as this um, collection of value stocks generally agreed upon by um, the greats. So an interesting thing is that um, while looking at data online, I, fi- I found a chart which, which charted the Rus- Russell value PE um, according to the Russell growth PE. So ratio between the two. And um, the current ratio is 0.6. Whereas the long term average has been 0.8. So there's a clear, um, the, that is value stocks look ki- kind of attractive right now in terms of the PE, the PE ratio. Yes, that is because value stocks have become more in fashion now. Is because that uh, money is not available. Money has become costly. So companies which declare dividends which are uh, which are available at reasonable prices are in more demand therefore value stocks as the so-called released value stocks have revalued right. uh, high flying growth companies have come down have come down in value because money has become tighter money has got some uh, value now and it looks like that the federal reserve will have to tighten quite a bit for some time before it turns up the corner right um, so we always talk about this concept of reversion to the mean mm. so if you look at the reversion to the mean concept mm. uh, the current ratio is 0.6 between Russell value PE and Russell growth PE and the long term average has been 0.8 so what that indicator at least tells me is that if there is a reversal re- reversion to the mean um, we have some money to make uh, backing value stocks there is a lot of money to be made backing value stocks over a long time what may be value to you maybe may group be. may not be value to me but you have to remember what you consider value coca coke is considered as value, value. I think today yeah. for a long time for nearly 20 years Buffett waited to buy coke yes because he wanted the right valuations so the line is very thin between what is value and what is growth growth I would look at it from an Indian point of view which is what I have done companies which can sell their stocks and use it as currency to raise more money that is growth that is growth and country companies which are forced to borrow right right I'm forced to borrow to expand our value let me take two examples in the same family 
that is TCS or Titan can issue currency that is the Tagus stock. currency and uh, you do a QIP issue to raise money to fund their growth needs whereas Tata Steel and Tata Motors had to borrow money to grow right now of course Tata Motors has moved into electric vehicle where that particular division is now being treated as a growth stock by the market right so within the group if the business has a fancy of a owner the market it is treated as value because its currency is treated as stock Stocks. is treated as currency when the market does not have a fancy for it 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 becomes value I remember Tata struggling twice to put out a rights issue. rights issue for Tata Steel and a rights issue for Tata Motors. Motors. And they did a rights issue for Indian Hotel. But they don't will never do a rights issue for TCS. TCS. Titan was one time in serious trouble, but now it's become a cash, cash, machine. cash machine and they will never do a rights issue for right. Titan. So within the group, two sets of businesses have become divergently apart. Right. Where one has become growth and value and also I look at it within Tata Motors, commercial vehicle and cars are not considered as growth, right. but EV is considered as growth. growth. So a lot of this definition depends on what the perspective, perspective of the investors. Investor is. Microsoft is considered growth yes, because they bought uh, LinkedIn, they have now gone bought Activation Blizzard, they have gone into cloud, they have rejigged the business yes. and now they are looking at what the market wants. Yeah. A older company, equally powerful, Intel is concentrated on rewarding investors, at times even borrowed money to reward investors, reward investors. miss the bus. Like, even Microsoft missed the bus in mobile, phone. mobile phones, even Intel missed the bus in mobile phones. For all the cloud farms, the servers run on Intel chips. Right. But Intel never made it. The market did not like what Intel did. Yeah. And so Intel is a out value stock today, out of favor value stock. Right. It is quite possible now Intel is concentrating on depth. Hmm. Instead of buying more chips, they are now looking at in-depth going in bringing back their fabs into the united states and they are going to working on supply chain so maybe under this new guy so vertical a, expansion vertical expansion intel may look better even within chips broadcom and uh, navid nvidia yeah. were considered growth whereas intel was considered stodgy yeah but some of it may be true that technology can uh, Intel has not made what it should have been making. Yeah. But the truth is Apple is treated like a value stock. Yes. But I don't see any new big hit from Apple in the last 20 years. After the iPhone. Value stock. Uh, sorry, the iPhone is stock. Apple is treated as a growth stock. Yeah. But it is yeah, after the iPhone they have not had a major hit. So how come Buffett saw something in it and decided to take ownership? Yeah, because he want he saw that as a consumer franchisee. Okay. He saw Apple as a why Apple? He didn't see it as a computer company. Right. He saw it as a company which makes which has only 20% of the market and makes 80% of the profits mm -hmm. apple uh, I, iphones does is not the largest selling phone it operates maybe 25 to 30 percent of the market. Google controls 70 percent of the market. Android. Android. But Apple takes most of the profits. Right. So he saw a moat. He saw a moat and he saw a consumer franchisee. Okay. So. So yes, then the eye, the beauty lies in the eye of the beholder. Yeah. You can look at it either this way or you can look at the other way. Okay. So coming to the next question, how do your typical value stocks like Tata Steel or um, Tata Motors, how do they behave in a high interest rate environment? In case of both Tata steel and tata motors in a high interest regime they will suffer okay because at least tata steel is a commodity player so the amount of money they can make is depending on the commodity cycle right and they always need money to borrow yes so they are always under pressure yeah in fact tata steel got out of pressure luckily because in this cycle the steel boom the steel cycle they escaped in the last two years they cut their debt by 50 percent yeah and now they have said they don't need to expand in orga organic they can grow organically and they need they need not uh, do an inorganic expansion either by borrowing or issuing rights no tata motors is a slightly different case tata motors commercial vehicle is going to take a heavy toll because of high interest rate regime and, and lack of demand the cars is really expanding fast they are able to put out new cars yes so they are growing a lot of the consumer cars have been very successful in the recent past yes but their ev car with in india is a second third or third largest market among developing i'm leaving out america and japan right so after china India is a large market and the electric car at that price nobody has made so far. They have sold 10,000 cars. That's a substantial number to do test marketing. Maybe, yeah. They have sold 10,000 cars. They hope to sell 50,000 cars and then move it to 1 lakh cars. So that's why 
a fund has valued that division at 10 billion dollars and has invested some money for 10 percent stake they have given them 8000 crores for a 10 percent stake so basically it's a company valued in two different parts and then there's a third part which is a luxury company which is now doing not doing well for the last three years JLR. jlr but once the market opens up jlr will do well right so tata motors is going to suffer because of high interest rates in cars and LCVs, but they are going to do well in power if they get their act together and they are going to do well in JLR. So, um, <coughs> from what, from how I see it, JLR is basically a high elasticity product. Yes. So, as income increases, the demand for JLR will increase. increase yes. And the current situation is the richer lot of people have done better after the pandemic right. than those who are poor. Um, moving on to the next question. Mm. What are, so you said that the, there's a line, fine, very fine line between uh, growth and value. It's tough at times to differentiate between the two. And we identified Google as one of, uh, a more of a value stock than a growth stock. But uh, Google is a growth stock. Yeah. Now they are split it and the value has come down. And there are some antitrust moves in that. Yes. Which will depress the price of Google. But Google is a repeated moonshot company. So I am getting it at a very cheap price, yeah. but there is going to be a lot of moonshot bets, one or two take off. Yeah, that's more than enough. If their car, software for their car, they are not going to make the car. Yeah. If the software for driving takes off, it's going to kill Tesla. Right. So on that note, uh, what are one or two fact? not you don't have to go too much into detail, but one or two factors which 100% or not 100%, but in a large in a large manner will tell you whether one is a value or a growth stock. See, growth stocks normally tend to have very high growth in sales. So you have to look at price to sales ratio. Their sales continue to grow at breathneck pace. Like what I told you in Tata Motors electric vehicle, 10,000 last year, 50,000 next this current year right. and 1 lakh the next year. So that's a breakneck pace of growth. So companies which continue to grow so fast, that's so they tend to be valued five years from now. Okay. That is why the Indian private sector banks were always treated as growth stocks. They were trading at four to five times their books. So the discount rate is actually pretty high. Pretty high. Where uh, you look, you have to discount it. What the investors are doing, they are very confident about the future, right. and they tend to discount five years into the future. Yeah. In value stocks, we are not very sure. We are defensive. You would like to discount the last twelve months earning. Yeah. You don't know what the next twelve months is going to do. By temperament, and because in, there are people who do very well in growth, growth but by temperament, I am a very defensive player player, extremely defensive player. More of a Wellington than a Napoleon. Okay, more of a Wellington than Napoleon. Yeah. I want to survive. So I don't go for fancy growth, growth stocks, stocks at valuations. Couple of times I throw the bat. One time which I threw in the bat recently is Natco Pharma, which because of one bat quarter <coughs> corrected enormously. Yeah. And I pounced, even when I pounced, the P by E ratio was extremely high. But I bought it for a reason because I've been tracking it for a long time. And um, one of the, in, one interesting um, I had recently come upon was um, Tangamel. Because when we bought Tangamel, we didn't, I mean, we, we thought that there was some value in the company. But then after talking to the owner, it has become, it's actually a, a growth, growth stock. stock. Yes. I was shocked. I was shocked. Yeah. Anyway, um, moving That's on. why yeah. the scuttlebutt technique of Peter uh, Phil, Phil Fisher is very important. You have to. We are not big enough to talk to the owners yet, but you have to talk to the owners to really get a feel to of what the company feel. is doing. ITC was a value stock. Yeah, which went really well. Yeah. Um, okay. And then uh, coming down to the next question, uh, why has the U.S. market rallied recently? I think they expect a recession for the wrong reason. I expect they expect a recession, so I, they think the Fed will stop because the Fed has habituated them to right. 20 years. They expect 3.5 or in that bound ballpark. And, and to stop. And now the rumors have said that uh, Fed will be dovish on 26th because recession charges chances are very high. Right. And they will not go beyond 1%. They will not go to 1%. Yeah. It is quite possible. But if the market senses, if this is what the market senses, yeah. if this is what market senses, this is what people will senses. People will sense. And like I've always told you, and since Edward Films, a Nobel laureate demonstrated, expectations are more important than reality. So it's a narrative. It's a narrative. If they take the foot of the gas pedal, inflation will get more entrenched. Actually... I will be more worried if they go to with a 0.75, not because they have chickened out. It means that they are not serious about inflation and inflation is indeed going to be a serious problem down the line. Right. Okay. And um, finally, you can quickly touch upon this. Uh, how do you, I mean, you play mainly in India. So how do you find value stocks to be in India compared to the US? 
I have just moved into U.S. stocks, so I don't have the breadth of analysis, breadth in, of US. analysis in U.S. stocks. Yeah. But somebody like Guy Spear is doing well. He's doing pretty well. Yeah. So he, there must be a lot of value stocks. In Amer the American universe, the compliance is far better, the trust on numbers is far better, and uh, the regulation is tighter, and uh, violations are criminal in nature. So how does that factor into... In India, except in the top 200 companies, yeah. I don't know whether the book is honest or not. Okay, that's an important point. Because value is all based upon the book. On the book. I do not know whether the book is honest. So even with a 60% margin of safety, you might have 0% margin of safety. Yes. So it, the Phil Fisher's principle that the promoter is important yeah. has more value in Indian situation. So promoters have a precedent over whatever, uh, what else the book says. I never bought Z, though it was the largest television. Because of the promoter. Because of the promoter till Sony took over. Right, now Sony took, took over. over. So yeah. when so I started buying only after Sony came in. Came in. Because Sony is an international company, cannot afford to cheat. Right. But this fellow is a crook yeah. in terms of being a business guy. Yes. So he doing all sorts of shady deals. So I never bought it. So the importance you give to a promoter is extremely important in India than to than in US. Yeah. I would trust what I see in a cottage balance sheet. I would see what I trust in a Tata balance sheet. I would trust what I see in a TVS balance sheet. I because they worry the about their I worry about they worry about their names. Yeah. I would trust what I see in a Murgappa balance sheet. I know Ramesh, so I will see why trust what Ramesh does with in Tangamail. In Tangamail. If I don't trust the promoter, then there's no point looking there is the no books. point. And so, in India, except in the top 200 companies, <coughs> books are cooked. And this is why the Indian market values MNC stocks extremely high. Okay. Because they, ha they have to put money somewhere and that's why it is there. So, IT was, uh, ITC was an aberration when we found it so cheap. Okay. Um, that's about it for today. Thank you. I had an in most interesting conversation on value versus, value versus growth. Thank you. And if you like this content, kindly consider sharing with your friends and relatives. Hit the subscribe button. Turn on the bell notification. If you do not turn on the bell notification, you will not be notified every time we put out a video. Once again, I thank you for your support for Beerich. It's a great privilege and honor that so many of you in thousands have subscribed to my channel and have supported me. I have written two books in English, The Alchemy of Money and Ordinary Stocks, Extraordinary Profits. These books are published by us and are ready. If you want to procure a copy, send us a message to the WhatsApp number given below and my team would respond to you. If you want an Amazon Kindle copy, you can click the link below. Finally, those who wish to consult with me can send a mail to berichenglish at gmail.com. Once again, I thank you for your support. If you like this video, press the subscribe button of my channel, hit the like button and turn on the bell notification.